the nature of running a business is to inc to increase your net worth. That's why you do it. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't do that and you're just paying your bills and you're just taking money home and just pay, well, you're just, you you have a job. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, the nature of building a business is to increase your net worth. And because of that, you have control and power. So. Welcome to 7 to 8, our special series on 7 to 8 figure entrepreneurs. In this special series, I interview million dollars, some $10 million, and even some million dollar business owners who uncover their twists and turns in their entrepreneurial adventure in order to help you to avoid the potholes and stick to the fast track. Welcome now to Center Stage, our next special guest. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I am here with my most amazing guest, Stephen. Stephen, thank you so much for being here with us today. Sure. It's good to be here. Excellent. So give us a highlight of who you are and what you do for business. Well, um, I've built seven companies in the last uh, 30 years. Um, I those, those companies have been between the $5 million and $25 million dollar mark. Um, the two, two of them made the Inc 500 fastest growing companies in the United States. And right now I, I still own three companies of those, um, those seven. Um, and so, you know, one company I own right now provides, it's called financing solutions. Uh, and that provides lines of credit to small businesses. And, uh, another business I own is called elite funeral funding. And what we do is buy life insurance policies when someone passes away, so that the family can have the money immediately instead of waiting the 45 days it typically takes for an insurance company to pay out. And uh, and then I own some commercial real estate as well. So uh, so I've been a serial entrepreneur, uh, proven, you know, uh, some people say that they've built, you know, companies and I can prove it. So through uh, the Inc. 500 fastest growing company list and, and those type of things. And so, you know, that's, that's where, that's what I do. I love it. And congratulations. So I'd like to start with, how did you get into financing as a, as a business occupation and, and the, uh, and the insurance sounds like a fascinating area as well. How did that catch your eye? Yeah, well, it's a, it is a good story. I mean, you know, my whole life has been a good story, uh, pretty much. Uh, I, I've had one terrible thing happen uh, outside of business, but uh, other than that, it's been a it's been a great life. And uh, I'm 58, by the way. Um, and so, so what happened was um, up until uh, so the the first uh, three businesses I had, uh, the second and third one, uh, the second one did very, 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 very well. Like it got to uh, about six million dollars in revenue, and it went on for about twelve years, but it had a limited time. It had a limited. Uh, we were catching this wave. I knew it was going to end at some point, uh, but the revenue that the, the, I'm sorry, the profits we were making on that six million were awesome, right? And I didn't realize how awesome it was until I got some other businesses, and I'm like, wow, it was good. And <laughs> uh, you know, grass is always greener somewhere else, right? And, um, and so then I had my second company, which I, I kind of started it while and the other company was starting to slow down and it was called healthcare seeker. The first company was called expert seeker, uh, expert seeker placed high-end technology consultants into fortune, fortune 500 companies. And then the second business healthcare seeker placed what's called travel nurses, um, who are registered nurses who work at hospitals throughout the United States. Um, and uh, where uh, I'm going to try to get your question quickly. Oh, whereas, good. yeah, whereas the first, uh, the second company, uh, uh, Expert Seeker, uh, I hit it going up on the industry, on the economy. The healthcare seeker, which I got into because I thought it was going to be recession proof, uh, I got it uh, as it was going down. So it, it it's certainly a lot easier building a company when an industry is going up than when an industry is going down. So um, after Healthcare Seeker, I sold it for a very small amount of money. I had it for a number of years. That company got to 11 million. That was the company that made the Inc. 500 fastest growing companies in the United States. Uh, it was one of them. And um, 
the um, I uh, I also started another company in between there that did well. Um, but then after I kind of got out of these businesses, uh, me and my future business partner, which I hadn't had business partners before, he sold his company for a really he had a dynamite company, and so he and I um, started looking together at angel funding deals, and um, and we we did that for about two and a half years together, and we did not we did not like the angel funding model, and so while we were uh, doing that, we we really found that we got along incredibly well. And so uh, we started thinking about building a company ourselves together. And um, I brought him to a meeting with one of my mentors. And my mentor talked about this idea of using our own capital to provide it to other businesses, uh, such as line of credits. And I had a lot of experience with getting lines of credit from banks and I knew how bad, how hard it was and how crazy it was. And I am, I, I really, and if you, I think if you picked any business that I would have said, I will not go into, it was finance because I don't understand it. So, but I was never afraid to go into businesses that I didn't um, get or that I didn't have experience in, you know, luckily my business partner was really good with finance and um, and so we had this meeting with my mentor and he was going over the numbers of the industry and the potential. And, you know, I kind of really didn't get it. And I can't, we got out of that meeting and my business partner goes, his name's Keith. He goes, do you know how much opportunity there is in this industry and, you know, what we can do and how our life, what our jobs might be like and you know, what we're looking for in our future, as far as a lot less employees, a lot less um, concerns. Uh, and so he made me aware of it. And then like, which is normal for me, I said, okay, let's go do it. And he's like, what? We were just talking here. I'm like, no, let's go. I haven't even it. hit the car yet. <laughs> yeah. So we, we started financing solutions 12 years ago. It's done very, very, very well. It's a $25 million company. And then while both Keith and I had a lot of experience in business and we know it was like to go through recessions. And so we wanted to start another business that was counter cyclical to financing solutions. Um, uh, and we started elite funeral funding, uh, which again, buys life insurance policies when people pass away. Um, and, uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, we what we found is actually both of those businesses do well in good times and bad. So uh, they've been good business. And and I, I don't plan on starting another business. I think we're I'm pretty much done. So, yeah. Oh, you say that. <laughs> yeah, I know your type. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. So first off, congratulations on running a profitable company right off the bat, because mm -hmm. in my experience, most start their first business awesome success but then realize the profit margin thing is kind of important i don't <laughs> like, i don't know i don't know why that would be a successful business but i mean well, we're, we are we are in this business to to make, make money. money so you know on any of the businesses and if you're not doing that then i i i get it you know like i remember when i started my you know up to my second company i thought the more employees I have, the, the more successful I was. That's how screwy it was. And a lot of times people also think of their revenue as the the big, wow, I have $25 million company. Uh, I mean, listen, that's a different scale. Let's say you have a three or $5 million company and you're and you're not taking, like maybe you're taking home $100,000 US dollars. That's terrible. You know, it's terrible. Um, so, you know, you know, the nature of running a business is to inc to increase your net worth. That's why you do it. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't do that and you're just paying your bills and you're just taking money home and just pay, well, you're just, you you have a job. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, the nature of building a business is to increase your net worth. And because of that, you have control and power. So Nice. I love it. So what are some of the things that you were looking or let's back up a little bit. How did you get a hold of the companies that you were looking at financing and 
um, and ultimately, why did you decide against the angel investor format versus the financing? Uh, so the angel, uh, let's take the second one first. Okay. The angel funding for us is what 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 we saw was that you needed to be in ten deals, and in the hopes that one would pay off, and that one would pay off at least ten times um, what you put into it. You know, and we just saw a lot of people not, you know, a lot of people make make their money in their own business. And then they go the angel funding route because they don't have their own ideas or they don't want to put the the, the sweat work into it again. And it seems glorious, uh, glamorous, excuse me. And and no one was making money doing it. And it was very rare. And and so we didn't like the we did not like the numbers. We didn't like the companies we were seeing. We saw like we would see three four hundred companies a year, and we just didn't like them. Um, you know, there was one deal that we almost potentially did. And then we ended up backing out because we didn't, something turned us off with the owner. Um, so that was the reason why we didn't go the angel funding route is because it, we just felt it wasn't, um, we didn't see any success. Now, uh, uh, what was your, your first question? Finance exclusive. How do I get clients? So my skill set has always been, um, I am a really I like and love, and I'm good at it, coming up with, uh, you know, I call them lead generation programs, but mar marketing, I'm really good at it. I spend 95% of my time at the companies doing that. And it's, a, it's highly unusual. I mean, I, so I find ways for client, for prospects to find out about us in a, uh, in a way that we can make money uh, so, you know, so throughout the years, rather that be, believe it or not, direct mail, where email marketing campaigns, display advertising, uh, SEO, SEM, search engine optimization, search engine marketing, um, uh, referral programs, broker programs. I'm just listing all the things that we've tried and we you know, what I do is try marketing campaigns, evaluate if they're effective, I measure them, and and then determine how much money we make versus how much we spent, and is it worthwhile? And after twelve years, you know, with financing solutions and with Elite, we 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 have that formula down, right? And. And that's really a key. Like if you want to build a business that's over $3 million, let's say in revenue, you are just not going to do that through word of mouth or through a, a salesperson. You know, you have to do that through uh, lead generation. And, um, you know, I, I firmly believe that the key to our success um, partly has to do with our ability to acquire clients and to, and to, in that that that's the magic formula that most people I think forget. I love it. So talk to me about the businesses, because I think a lot of entrepreneurs go into business because they love the idea of something. It's like, Oh, this is a great idea. Let's go and make, turn this into a business. And they're not looking at the numbers first. They're looking at the passion first. And obviously when they're looking at the numbers first, that it makes more sense. How do you, navigate that conversation with people to go, mm, your profit margins aren't there and this isn't kind of worth it. But if you made some changes, you know, things might work out and, you know, go make your decision. See you later. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the just, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I'll answer that two ways. The first thing is, I listen, I don't love the industries I'm in. I like them. I love the money. I make from them. Okay. So everyone says, find something that you're passionate about and then go into that, that business. I, I just don't feel that way. I mean, it's just, you know, like, you know, like I look at every business as if is as, as, as if it's a business case study. And along with that, what I've learned over the years is look for margins and if the margins that you are going to be able to charge are large, then that's a good business to be in. If your margins are small, are below, um, you know, 
ten percent at least. That's, that's, that's a joke. Um, but uh, we're talking margins, not net profit. But um, if your margins are really, really low, you have to be incredibly great at execution. And you know who competes on low margins? Well, I would kind of. I hate to say that, but big business, big business. You know, they go for volume. Right now, yes, they try to expand their their margins by buying up competition and doing those type of things. But you know, if you are going to compete at on price as a small business at tw under twenty million in revenue, you've lost already. When bigger margins with large margins, that means you're doing something unique in the industry because you can charge more. It, it means that um, you can make more mistakes than you could if you had low margins. So I really like high margin businesses. And I learned that. I learned that my business partner is really the one who kind of taught me that as well. So, you know, those are, you know, so again, you know, look for opportunities uh, where you're going to get into a business that you don't have to love it. What you, what you want to love is running a business. You know, and that's what I do. I love running a business. I find that people who love their business, right, that they just love what they do. They are, they don't sell their business at the right time. They are too attached to their business and they get affect, they affect their family. You know, their life, their life becomes their business and they have nothing else of interest outside of their business. So I think there's a lot of um, mistakes now. Have I? I don't. I have never. Well, I haven't taken a company public. I haven't taken a company and sold it for a lot of money yet. I find elite will be that way. That's a sellable entity that will sell for for big. I'm gonna go with a lot of money is a subjective term. <laughs> Slightly biased. I agree with you. Like I don't <laughs> think 25 million dollars is a very big company. You know, I mean, uh, both Elite and and Financing Solutions separately are 25 million dollar companies. Um, they're they're not. That's not really considered a big company. I think a hundred million dollar company is a is a good big company, right? Um, so. Yeah, so I think that, you know, don't get so attached to your business. Grow your net profit, uh, grow your um, net worth. Look at it that way, and I think it's healthier. Right, I love that. So what are some of the things that people can look at to, if they're either looking for a business or they're looking to kind of get out of where they're at? So maybe they're selling their business and they have a capital influx. And now they get to go and do something bigger, better. Where or what resources do you recommend people go to to look at businesses that are going to have the right profit margins? So I'll tell you how I did it, all right? Because it hasn't changed um, in 30 years. And that is, so um, the the first thing is, um, I so, so in between some of the companies I've had, and, and I tell you, it was the funnest time in my life, was being able to, um uh, uh sit down and and I actually would sit down with an uh, uh, a pad and paper and I would just search the internet and start reading everything I could in sight and just wherever it goes you know I would read business articles type in what's the next upcoming businesses um you know uh Maybe uh, look at something. Here's you know here's something that my mentor told me, which I did take advice for the first company I built. He said, uh, "What was what is something that you already know really well, and go, look for businesses in that industry, right?" And so for me, my first company was a digital printing business because I worked for Xerox for eight and a half years, and so I, I my first business was involved in digital printing because that's what I knew really really well. So you. You, you really just want to take three to four hours every day. And what I did, what I always did during this time was typically I would, you know, really get like, do things I really liked, which I like I'd go work out or go play tennis or whatever I was doing at the time. And then, and, you know, I might do that. Like I might work for an hour and a half or two hours. Then I go do something I really like. Then I come back and work for another two or two and a half hours and just brainstorm. So then I would come up with a list. And then, uh, and then maybe I would go through lists and I prioritize A, B, and C. 
A being the best, uh, some of the best ideas I had. Um, like, well, I remember one of the ideas I had a long time ago uh, was I, I thought I wanted to get involved in um, in uh, protecting companies from cyber attacks, right? And now it's normal, but back then it wasn't. And uh, and I thought that was one of my A ideas, right? And so then I, you know, with that, then what I do is I dive into it. And I start to do all the research on that industry. And, you know, I might call up an owner of a company in that industry and ask him if I could pick his brain. And you, you say, oh, you, no one's going to give you information. I found it the complete opposite. Like, because I would call people like uh, I'm in New Jersey. I'd call people in California. And they don't know I'm like, they don't care I'm in New Jersey, right? Depends on the size, right? And I I did that all the time. So with healthcare seeker, with the travel nurse business, I I had two really good friends that became lifelong friends. One was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and one was in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Who before I started the business, I called and pick up their brains. And the guy in Jacksonville, Florida, he I actually flew down to see him for three days. Oh, I did it in both spots, right in Tulsa and and Jacksonville, Florida. So, you know, you know, you're saying, well, that's Steve, that's out there. What I'm trying to illustrate is you got to think outside the box and you got to say, what's the margins in the business? Maybe you talk to your accountant. Maybe he knows some people. Maybe you, um, you know, you do lots of research and it's so much easier nowadays, but um, you, and then you start to say, then you start to make a list of things that maybe you want in your business. You know, it's a little easier for me now because I know like, I don't want a lot of employees. So that's one of my criteria. So if I'm building a company with a lot of, that needs a lot of employees, I don't, I don't want that. Right. Um, and that's how you do it. You kind of, and then you talk to a lot of people. You, you know, one thing I've learned is no good idea comes from sitting behind your computer and searching the internet. You have to get out there and talk to people. So go to, go to some conferences, go to business, the business uh, meetings, um, you know, talk to people and, you know, you can want to, you want to get those, those, that your brain thinking. Right. And, uh, and I find that for me personally, um, talking to people helps me move the direction of the needle. And then you really, you know, then you, then you start to really kind of you put a business plan together, but the business plan isn't for somebody else. It's for you. It's for you to to dot the I's and cross the T's. It's for you to go through everything. And then the last thing I would say is I this is comes from experience, and that is which is the best way to do this is um, you don't believe everything you think because when you invest a lot of time in something. Uh, you start to believe your own juice, like your own. And you really need somebody on the outside saying, wait a minute, how did you come up with those margins? You know, you sure those margins are what you think they are? You know, are you sure that's all the capital you need to start this business? Right. Um, and because I did that, I remember I went to see this that guy in Tulsa and I saw his margins and his margins were small. And I was like, oh, I don't think he runs a very good business. I can do better. And then when I got into the business, I realized he was more accurate than I was. So so would you say that some of the best business ideas are still made on you know, restaurant napkins? No, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think this, the best business ideas are are the ones that just come to you. I mean, everyone knows that being in the showers where your best business ideas come from because you're not thinking about any, you're focused on, you're not really thinking of many other things. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, no, I think my best business ideas came from, a, it came from talking it through with other people because you, you have an idea that starts in one area and then it pivots mm -hmm. and then it pivots again and then it pivots again. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I guess you were probably saying the same thing, aren't we? <laughs> I, I guess it depends where you have those conversations, whether it's yeah. in your podcast or in your, yeah. or in a restaurant or playing tennis. True, true. All good. Yeah. 
Nice. I love it. So who would you say is, or what would you say now is your favorite part of your business? What do you love to do? The money I, I make. Right. Yeah. I love it. So I, I know that our listeners are going to want more from you. How would they start their journey with you? Either reading your books, your podcasts. Yeah, well, I, I do a really good podcast. I've had four. Uh, I, I actually do two of them. But one the one that your audience would be most interested in is um, the one I do called the Entrepreneur MBA Podcast. And uh, it's the, the mission is to help people get over $10 million. And so I bring on great guests who have experience in doing that. Um, you know, the $10 million mark is important because that's when you can kind of sell your business. Um, that's when people start getting interested in your business. And that's what I've found from experience. Once I reach that $10 million mark, then people are, things start to be a lot more fun. And so, uh, it, that's a good podcast. And then if you're looking for a business line of credit for your business, you can go to, um, FS credit line. That's financing solutions, credit line.com again, FS credit line.com. And, you know, within two minutes, you, you, you fill out a simple application, no documents are needed. And then we can tell you if we think that you would be approved based on what you said on the application. Yeah. Love that. Well, I get to ask you at what point in life did you know that you were a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Well, that was my goal when I was 17. So my goal was to go work for a big company. I thought I'd go work on Wall Street first. And uh, and and that's because the movie um, uh, oh my, Wall Street came out, the first one. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of the hot thing of the time. But I thought I would, and also Bill Gates and Steve Jobs were all over the uh, magazines. So I thought I'll go work for uh, a, a big company and then I'll go um, start my own company. Um, and that's exactly what happened. I worked for Xerox for eight and a half years. I was the um, one of the top sales reps in the country for, for Xerox, which was the Google of its day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I stayed there for eight and a half years. And then I, I had planned on it. I started my first company, uh, right when I was getting married, um, at, at 30. Um, and, um, and then it went from there and I was lucky in that, um, my second company, did really, really well. And so you asked me, how how do you start a business? <laughs> well, the way I did it was I worked for Xerox without them knowing it from six to one o'clock. And then from one to uh, eight at night, I, I did my business. And I did that for the first year. So you you know, you know you got to have a way to pay the bills. You got to have a runway because it's going to take you three to five years to start making money that you can take out of the business. And um, so, and that's the way, you know, the, the term now is a side hustle, which is a little bit different than, you know, a little bit different than what I did, but, but you, you kind of want to do that unless you get a big influx of money that you can say, okay, I, I can live off this for three to five years. And there's very few people who can do that. Absolutely. So I love it. Is there any questions that I should be asking you that I haven't asked you yet? Well, with 30 years of experience, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, we, the podcast could go on for weeks, right? <laughs> right. And Look, I know, I'm it. fascinated. So I could, I could keep you here for that yeah. long, but I won't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what, you know, what, it hasn't been as fun as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it, it's, it has been, you know, to be able to live your lifelong dream, and again, for me, a successful uh, career uh, for me has been to be able to live my dream of, of I can't imagine if I, because I had the potential to stay at Xerox. I was really happy there. I did really well. But I was like, if I don't do this, I'll just never, um, you know, I think that's what happens with business owners. They have a calling and they feel like they have to do it. And those who make the leap um, and, and listen, I, I I would really counsel everybody to not believe the idea that building a business is is risky. Is I mean really risky. If you're in the B2B space or B2G, the the chance of successes are is a lot, lot higher than you think it is. It's when you're in the retail space or the restaurant business 
or something like that, that is really risky. Um, but when you get into B2B and B2G, business to government, it's, you know, you, you can really make it happen. And uh, those are professional businesses a little bit more. Yeah. B2C is harder. So. Well, I have heard the expression that friends don't let friends buy restaurants or flower shops. <laughs> <laughs> or cupcake shops or cookie <laughs> shops or, you know, these small businesses, people just really don't realize, you know, if you make 150,000 in revenue, there's no money left over for uh, profits, you know? Yeah. I love it. You have been absolutely awesome. Any last words for our peeps? Um, if you're meant to do it, you'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable it is. Sure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your friends. We love helping entrepreneurs grow. Thank you for listening to 7 to 8. If you're interested in upping your speaking game, be sure to connect with our guests with the links in the show notes and connect with me to see how we can help you get your tech done for you and help your speaking dreams come true.